What's going on everybody, this is Tatro, and today I want to show you how I made this beat using the Artifon Instrument 1. So in case you are unfamiliar, this is the Instrument 1 by Artifon. It's a MIDI controller that sort of mimics a guitar. It has six strings and then 12 frets. And then these little rubber pieces here, you can strum. You can play it like a normal guitar. But then you can also switch modes and play it like a piano. Or drums. All right, before we get in too deep making a beat with the Instrument 1, I just wanted to point out that with all the modes that come in the Instrument 1 that I'll explain later, I'm drawing on my guitar knowledge, my piano knowledge, my music production knowledge. It took me years to acquire all those different skills and you might have a blind spot in one of those areas that I'm about to go through. And if that's the case, you might consider Skillshare the sponsor for today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, music, business, and more. As a music producer and performer, you have to pull from lots of different skill sets, and in this tutorial, I'm showcasing skills on guitar, piano, and music production, all of which can be learned through courses on Skillshare. Skillshare is super affordable with a premium membership for under $10 a month. Premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. This means if you want to learn music production, piano, and guitar all at the same time, you can access all of those courses under your one membership. Cool thing about this sponsorship is that you can get two months free of Skillshare by using the link in the description. When you join Skillshare, you're joining a community of more than 7 million other creators learning on the platform. All right, let's get back to the tutorial. And in order to make this beat, I took advantage of the Artifon Instrument 1 editor. So in the editor, you can look at the different modes that are programmed into the instrument one, as well as assign your own custom modes. And you can switch modes on the fly with this button on the instrument one. I'll show you here. Switching between the modes. The last four modes with the dots are the custom user modes. And essentially what I've done is I've taken these user modes and programmed a couple smart strum presets that I can use. Smart strum essentially means you can put one finger on one fret and it'll play an entire chord. This makes it super easy to get up and running playing chords. And I actually use that to start this track. I start a lot of my beats with chords and I'm even using the same preset here as I did in my Complete Control A25 beat, the uh, Diva HS Ganymede. It sounds like this. which is such an awesome sound, especially when you're strumming them. So this was a really inspiring way to start this beat. Then I switched over to the guitar mode and I played the Wavetable Apex Twist preset as a lead. Now it will pick up your bends and you can tap. So 
So I put those two parts together and I also used a splice loop running through this track from the YNG kit. It's just a hi-hat loop and it sounds like this when those two are together. And now the drums are about to drop. So for drums, again, I have some splice samples in a drum rack. And instead of switching over to drum mode on here, I've actually programmed my own mode that better aligns with Ableton's drum rack, which is essentially just a bunch of notes arranged chromatically. So basically two kicks, one with a crispier high end, one with those highs rolled off, a snappy snare sound with the highs rolled off, and then a super bright version of that. Then the last element is a vocal sample. So usually have a sampler open and I drop whatever vocal sample I can find from my collection of samples. And I played this using the piano mode. So if I switch over by clicking the button, to the little piano mode. Each fret becomes a note in a scale on the piano. Lots of delay and reverb on there. Of course, running it to a breather as well to get that nice bright sound. Essentially, that just means I have very high EQ and then some reverb, which adds brightness. Let's try to hear what difference that makes. It's subtle, but the sound does get a little bit crispier. Put all those simple pieces together and you have what turns out to be a really cool beat, but for me, it was really fun to play on an instrument one. All right, so that's how I make beats using the Instrument One. I really love the Instrument One for being such a unique controller. And part of the reason I love controllerism in general is because depending on the tool that you're using, it can have a big influence on the music that you make. So I like to have a wide variety of different tools so that I can make a wide variety of different styles of music. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to go down and click the subscribe button for more live electronic music performances, tutorials, and content to make you a more productive producer. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.